Hello, welcome students. So we are discussing the quick revision program for NEET. And uh, in the earlier part, we discussed about uh, the structural organization in which uh, tissues we discussed, earthworm and frog we discussed. Now we need to discuss about structural organization only, but first uh, we'll complete cockroach, then we'll move on to our next topic clubbed with this is environmental issues. And cockroach is, <coughs> is nocturnal animal. So those which are active during night time are called nocturnal. It is nocturnal and uh, omnivorous. So taking different types of food materials is known as omnivorous. Whereas as far as its uh, running nature is concerned, it runs uh, fastly. So it can be called fusorial. So it can be called fusorial, right? So that is fast running. So fusorial and uh, <coughs> Uh, so it is uh, hiding in uh, dark areas and uh, <coughs> belonging to phylum arthropoda. So it belongs to phylum arthropoda and uh, the class is insecta. So insecta is the largest class and arthropoda is the largest phylum. And here <coughs> So thus uh, cockroach belong to arthropoda and then insecta and uh, second largest phylum is mollusca we have seen but uh, <coughs> and then <coughs> coming to the other aspects of cockroach. Cockroach, as uh, we discussed, it is uh, insecta and uh, the body is divided into three parts. So three parts in the body will be head, then thorax and then abdomen. Head, thorax, and abdomen. These are the three parts. So the first part is head. Head is made up of six segments. So head is made up of six segments, and thorax is made up of three segments. Abdomen is made up of 10 segments. <clears throat> so that is about number of segments. And here they will be having wings also. The wings uh, present uh, will be <clears throat> two pairs of wings. First pair is just uh, covering the second pair of wings. You want to see this, right? Head uh, provided with the uh, various uh, sense organs like antenna, compound eyes are present. Then second part as we discussed, uh, thorax, which is having three segments, pronotum, mesonotum, metanotum, or the sclerites present on dorsal side, or prothorax, mesothorax, mesothor uh, metathorax are the three thoracic segments. Then coming to the wings uh, we discussed just now, that is first pair of wings attached to mesothorax, second pair of wings or hind wings are attached to metathorax. Right. Coming to this abdomen, abdomen is having 10 segments and these 10 segments in the end uh, provided with the anal so you can say simply anal cerci, anal cerci. Then <coughs> last uh, segment, tenth segment uh, <coughs> attached with that, and uh, number of legs will be 
three pairs. Prothoracic legs, mesothorax, all these three pairs of legs are attached to only uh, thoracic region. Abdomen does not have any of these things, right? So that is about uh, general characters. So in this, one more thing uh, you need to remember is, body is having uh, exoskeleton, cuticle with chitin and it is made up of plate-like structures called uh, sclerites. And the sclerites are differentiated into uh, dorsal, terga, ventral, sterna and lateral flora. Dorsal, terga, ventral, sterna, lateral flora. That is uh, the three uh, terms we can use here. Means one segment typically is supposed to have how many plates? Four plates. And arthropoda is characterized by presence of chitinous cuticle. Outside is non-cellular chitin. Then below that epidermis is present. And arthropoda is the first phylum to have uh, striated or skeletal muscles. Now, this uh, cuticle is differentiated into cuticle is differentiated into three types of layers epicuticle exocuticle and endocuticle so cuticle has three layers that is epicuticle outermost is epicuticle and this is the part which uh, does not have any chitin. So in this chitin is absent. In this chitin is present. In this also chitin is present. So chitin absent in epicutical, present in exo and endo. Exocutical is the hardest part and uh, pigmented, pigment layer will be also present in this. Now, so coming to uh, head, uh, it is provided with uh, mouth parts. Now, so right. So the mouth parts include five. If you see labrum, number one, upper lip, labrum can also be called as upper lip. So this is also known as upper lip. So here labrum, labrum means what? Upper lip. Right. And uh, <coughs> labium is lower lip. So this uh, labium part is again su subdivided into submentum, mentum, then pre-mentum. So submentum, mentum, pre-mentum are three parts and then inside this uh, it has small uh, uh, segments called glossa in their outer paraglossa. Right. That is about uh, labium. Coming to maxilla. <coughs> the maxilla is differentiated into cardo first part second segment is called stripes then this entire thing is called maxillary pulp this part is called maxillary pulp pulp means it will be sensory having gustatory and olfactory receptors then uh, it has a, a hood like part galia and lacina so in this, this part is Lacina, then other one is Gilia. So this one is Gilia. Like this, Maxilla. 
So maxilla is having cardiostites, gilia lacina, maxillary pulp. Then a tongue-like structure present. This is called hypopharynx. Hypopharynx is tongue-like part. Then mandibles are the teeth-like structures which help in. That's why, uh, what is the term we use for the mouth parts of cockroach? So mouth parts of cockroach can be called as biting and chewing type. Type of mouth parts are called biting and chewing in cockroach. So basic uh, insects have this basic type of mouth parts and uh, abdomen has 10 segments and uh, <clears throat> here uh, of course there will be a few differences between males and females if you observe. So male cockroach which is larger which is small like most important thing is anal styles. There will be unsegmented appendages attached to the abdomen of male which are called anal styles. So one of the most important character is anal styles. <clears throat> so these anal styles present only in males, not present there. Then another important point is uh, brood pouch. So brood pouch will be present uh, in uh, <clears throat> particularly the term brood pouch is applied for female. So it will be formed by 7th, 8th and 9th sterna. So 7th, 8th, 9th sterna form brood pouch and the seventh uh, particularly is a uh, what is that uh, boat like structure right and uh, other things there are few differences long and narrow segments so these are different okay but uh, i am talking about the most uh, striking differences then in male uh, what happens is 10th uh, tergum uh, 10th tergum, here also so called genital pouch is present. So 10th tergum connected with that, the annals are present and anal styles attached to 9th uh, segment, we can say, right. And uh, the brood pouch is the term used in females and genital pouch used in males. In males, uh, the genital pouch dorsally has anus and ventrally has reproductive structures. That is uh, the 10th uh, tergum will be overlapping the 9th uh, sternum like that. Okay. So <clears throat> coming to the important systems, the systems, uh, various systems include a digestive system and uh, <clears throat> digestive system uh, So first thing, the gut is differentiated into three parts. That is fore gut, mid gut, and hind gut. So fore gut can also be called as a stomodium. Fore gut is also known as stomodium, and hind gut is proctodium. Right, proctodium. Right. So let us see the closely the parts. First, uh, mouth. Uh, so once in neat exam, they asked uh, sequence of parts in elementary and all. So <clears throat> some students study all complex things and forget the basic things. So you should be thorough with the basics and also a little bit application part also both the things. And uh, the mouth uh, leads into pharynx. So it is coiled uh, uh, muscular and you know complexity, why it gets coiled? When elementary canal length is more than the body wall, body, then it gets uh, coiled. So coiled elementary canal is present. Mouth leads to pharynx, pharynx into esophagus, then is crop. <coughs> 
crop is the distensible part. So the highly distensible part is a crop region. So this is the distensible part, crop. Now next is uh, gizzard. At the junction of uh, this uh, uh, foregut and midgut, between foregut and midgut, what will be present? The stomodial valve will be present, right? It will be stomodial valve. <coughs> Right. So between <coughs> foregut and uh, midgut, in this part, you will see a stomodial valve. The stomodial valve will regulate movement of a substance. So backward movement is prevented. Food does not enter backward. Then gizzard, highly muscular part is gizzard. This part is exactly the gizzard part. Right? So gizzard is muscular, circular muscles well developed. Internally there is a lining of cuticle. This is helping in grinding. So it is grinding and filtering, right? Then uh, there will be hepatic CK. The hepatic CK or uh, finger-like projection six to eight between this junction. It helps in digestion and absorption. The most important part in digestion is the mesentron. Mesentron proximal part secretes enzymes and distal part absorbs digested food. Thus, mesentron is the main place, but some enzymes can go back by reverse peristalsis into crop, and there also there can be a process, uh, a part of digestion happening. Now, coming to hindgut, hindgut has three parts that is, ileum, colon, rectum. But this ileum, the narrow part is ileum. So, narrow part is ileum. Second one is coiled. So what is the coiled part? Coiled part is colon, right? So coiled part is colon, narrow part is ileum. Next, uh, short and wide. Short and wide part is Rectum. So narrow part is ileum, coiled part is colon, next uh, the short and wide part is rectum. Now in this rectum it has six longitudinal folds which are called rectal papillae which increase area of absorption. So it is grinding the food, solid food is effectively taken and then <clears throat> the circulatory system. So it is having a closed or open type. The circulatory system can be called as open type because it has three types of sinuses. So the sinuses will be of three types, three compartments. What are the three sinuses? Dorsal sinus, that is pericardial sinus, and uh, surrounding various organs, the central one is called perivisceral sinus, and uh, third one is perineural. The lower one or ventral one is called perineural. Peri means around, neural means narrow cord. It surrounds the nerve cord. Thus, there are three types of sinuses. Now, <clears throat> you see in this diagram. So, if you observe, now, so, the upper one is a pericardial. This one is pericardial. This one is perivisceral and uh, lower one is perineural type. 
So the ventral sinus <coughs> is a perineural sinus. So perineural sinus. <coughs> the gut is centrally present and uh, the blood uh, circulates easily. You observe the dorsal side. Heart. What kind of heart is present? A neurogenic heart in non chordates like arthropods. Heartbeat is initiated by nerves, so we can call it neurogenic heart. So this neurogenic heart anteriorly has anterior aorta, 13 chamber. So thoracic region, three segments will contain three chambers. Abdomen region has 10 segments and 10 chambers, thus 13 chambers. Every chamber of the heart is, so this is anterior aorta and uh, what are present is allery muscles are also present and these allery muscles uh, they are fan like structures extending over the heart and uh, these allery muscles their contractions and relaxations can increase or decrease the dorsal sinus thus help in the uh, flow of blood right then uh, there will be uh, chambers present. Uh, it circulates in a peculiar manner. From central sinus, it can circulate. From central sinus, it can circulate to dorsal sinus whenever allery muscles contract. So when allery muscles contract, dorsal sinus will expand. So blood enters into dorsal sinus. Then uh, because of the heart, it flows towards the head, so called head sinus. From head, uh, it will enter to periviscerum and perineural when, when allery muscles relax. So when allery muscles contract, blood goes to dorsal sinus. When allery muscles relax, blood comes into periviscerum and perineural. But the thing is, through there are two diaphragms here dorsal diaphragm ventral diaphragm through dorsal diaphragm blood enters into dorsal sinus but through head only it comes to perivisceral and perineural so blood cells are present but uh, there is no color because uh, there is no respiratory pigment present in cockroach now so the Now, into coming to respiratory system, in the respiratory system of cockroach, it has these main components. That is trachea, spiracles and tergosternal muscles. Openings to outside can be called as a spiracles. And spiracles will be 10 pairs in cockroach and these will be 2 pairs present in thoracic region and 8 pairs are present in abdomen region. Now the spiracles lead into small chambers called atria. Atria will lead into trachea and trachea divide and divide and uh, finally give rise to tracheoles. So exchange of gases actually take place between tracheoles and tissues and thus the blood has no role in transport of gases and tergo between terga and sterna there will be specialized muscles which are called tergosternal muscles and uh, similarly coming to their excretion the excretory organs are mainly Malfusion tubules. Malfusion tubules will be present at the junction of uh, midgut and hindgut. We have discussed in digestive system, and uh, in this also there is a difference. The proximal part of malfusion tubule is uh, connected and closed. That's why it is called proximal, and the distal part is doing the function of secretion. 
So, in distal part, what is getting secreted? The secreted is potassium urate or sodium urate is getting secreted. Whereas, in the proximal part, it is getting absorbed. While absorption is taking place, what is getting absorbed is uh, bicarbonates of sodium or potassium. Secreted is urate, absorbed is bicarbonate. So, thus malfusion tubules in a way help in conservation of water because waste is not directly eliminated. It is getting eliminated through gut. So, eliminating through the gut is another advantage. And uh, in its uh, nervous system, it has a double ventral solid nerve cords. Then here, <coughs> The nervous system coming to nervous system and sense organs. The nervous system consists of the brain located on the dorsal side. Brain is located on dorsal side that is supra esophageal ganglia because it is above the esophagus and the double ventral solid nerve cord. So it will be double ventral and solid nerve cord. Then ganglia present, how many ganglia? Nine, nine uh, segmental ganglia present. Out of this nine, three will be thoracic ganglia, larger. Six will be abdominal ganglia. Three thoracic and six abdominal. Abdominal also actually one, first, second, third, fourth, sixth segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 uh, and uh, so like this. So first uh, 3 segments, 3 ganglia, then 4, 5, 6, uh, 4, 6 and 7, another 3. So totally 6 abdominal, 3 thoracic ganglia. These ganglia give rise to nerves to various organs. The sense organs uh, include antenna which contain olfactory means smell and tactile means touch receptors. Palps, uh, the mouth parts like uh, labium has labial palps and maxilla have maxillary palps that also do the function same thing that is olf uh, gustatory and olfactory. Gustatory and olfactory. In addition, there are compound eyes. Compound eyes means one compound eye is a complex structure made up of several units. The units are called omartidia. So the omartidia, each uh, compound eye has, eye has uh, 2000 omartidia. Each one is an image forming unit. So thus eyes are called compound eyes. And the vision is mosaic vision. And uh, it is very sensitive. So vision you can say more sensitive but less resolution right <clears throat> let us discuss about uh, <clears throat> the male and female reproductive organs cockroach is a unisexual very clearly sexually dimorphic the external differences we discuss now so they show clearly differences between male and female Right. Now, so the testis uh, will be present uh, in segments from uh, 4 to 6 segments. Right. So that is 4 to 6 segments. And from the testis, what arises is the ejaculatory First vas difference will arise, that is uh, two vasa differentia, you observe this part. So this is vas difference. So vas difference is starting from testis and the two vasa differentia, they will finally open into <coughs> ejaculatory duct. So this is the part of ejaculatory duct. So this one is ejaculatory duct. It starts from 7th segment onwards. And then uh, 
the ejaculatory duct ultimately opens on ninth sternum that is male genital aperture present on ventral phalamia there will be external genitalia which are also known as phalomeres so male has uh, three phalomeres right ventral left so left phalomere has structures like titillator pseudo penis so this is titillator this is pseudo penis then and uh, ventral phalomere has male genital aperture that is opening of ejaculatory duct is nothing but male genital aperture and uh, another important thing this is uh, okay right phalomere so external genitalia these three phalomeres represent external genitalia then there are two important accessory glands the two important accessory glands are <coughs> One is phallic gland or conglobate gland, other one is uh, the mushroom shaped gland. So this long tubules, small tubules, they all belong to mushroom shaped glands. So long tubules or you can say utricular majoris. So utricular majoris is the part uh, which forms uh, long peripheral tubules from innermost layer and uh, the middle layer of uh, spermatophore is formed when it is traveling through ejaculatory duct and then outermost layer of spermatophore is secreted by phallic gland. Like this there will be three layers. Now, <clears throat> so these two important glands, phallic gland and mushroom shaped gland or utricular gland. Then. Coming to female <coughs> reproductive system. In this female reproductive system, what uh, you can see is ovaries. Each ovary has eight ovarios, and ovaries are extending between. <coughs> so, ovaries will be extending between. Uh, 2 to testes we have seen that it extends between uh, 4 and 6 but ovaries are extending between uh, 2 and 6 segments right 2 and uh, 6 segments now this uh, <coughs> ovary has uh, two parts the narrow part uh, of the ovary is this one which is involved uh, right so what are the segments we discussed it is extending between two and six segments and uh, the narrow part ovarials uh, eight ovarials on right side eight ovarials on left side so totally 16 ovarials one ovarial is capable of producing one ovum and from this broad part that is the mature part of a, a ovary oviduct will be arising two oviducts uh, joined to form vagina so this is vaginum or vagina and vagina opens into the genital pouch so here there will be a sperma theca which is a one pair of uh, sperma theca present which receive sperms during copulation from few male when it releases spermatophore all sperms will be attracted within the sperma theca right then <coughs> the another important uh, gland is <coughs> collateral gland. The collateral gland tree like thing on present on both sides. Their secretions will be poured into the genital pouch and that help in the formation of cocoon. So once fertilization is completed, uh, cocoon will be formed. Thus uh, how many utika can be formed means 9 to 10 utika can be formed and which uh, Utika contains about 14 to 16 uh, uh, zygotes. 
So the, at a time one cocoon can contain up to 16. So it progressively undergoes mounts. The young stages are known as nymphs. Thus the eggs of zygotes can develop into nymphs. Around 14 to 16 nymph stages are coming out. And uh, sorry, uh, one egg you rise to one nymph, but nymph undergoes series of mounts, around 13 mounts. It takes 13 mounts for that to transform into adult. So as far as uh, economic significance is concerned, or metamorphosis, you can say, power of metabolism, slowly many mounts will transform this into adult. So this type of metamorphosis is called as Pauru metabolus type. So economically it is uh, causing damage to food products uh, and uh, it is harmful and uh, food can be contaminated. Many pathogens infective stages can be transmitted through this and it causes uh, it is one of the household pest and amoeba and other things uh, they can also be transmitted through cockroach. This uh, cockroach, uh, these external characters, you need to carefully follow.